What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we're also going to be talking about Neo Stock, the Chinese electric vehicle maker that has been been on an absolute tear here in the stock market over these past couple of days. What has caused this and what am I personally doing? Because I'm sure a lot of you already know at this point, I do have a position in NEO. So if you guys like this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me. And don't forget to join our Strive Smart Facebook group, Strive Smart Discord group chat, and the Strive Smart merch. All of those are linked down below in the description box. So without further ado, let's get right into it guys. Starting off here with the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded US companies. We can see right now, and I am recording this video a bit early um, with about 32 minutes left in the market, but right now the S&P is not really doing much. It's down about 86 cents here, um, down about 0.03%. And if we go to the one day, one minute chart to see what What's been going on today? You can see it's kind of been choppy, right? You know, we opened up at about 30.78. We popped up. We kind of got rejected by that old all-time high from yesterday. We almost hit another all-time high, right? Um, you know, if we were to uh, go above 30.85, but we ultimately ended up dumping from there all the way down to about 30.72. And again, from there we were kind of choppy, up and down, up and down um, for the rest of the day, and ultimately we're just sitting where we pretty much opened up at, which is why we are um, really break even pretty much for the day here. So there's not honestly much to talk about in terms of the S&P because again, it hasn't really done much. Same with the Dow and the NASDAQ. But what I'm looking at here is, is this prepping for a potential pullback now for a sell-off because it did fail to pop to another all-time high and because the RSI is overbought, you know, it could be, right? It could be setting off for a little bit of a sell-off here. Uh, maybe back down to about 3060 is where it could find support before running back up, right? If we break 3060, maybe about 3045, 3050, maybe even all the way down to 3026 for a nice healthy correction, that would be at least 1-2%, right? Yep, about 1.5%. If we pull down to there, guys, that would be very healthy, and I'd probably um, consider buying buying the dip on maybe some of these market ETFs that I trade that trade based upon the markets but Honestly, guys, that's kind of my thoughts, right? Everything that's going up, it needs to have a healthy correction at some point. And this has been running up very, very aggressively over the past couple of days without a really healthy, um, without really any correction at all, right? Ever since this pop-up, right? We've had one, two days, right? And really, now we're due for that little pullback. And even before that, right? Other than this, we've had one, two, three, four, five days in a row of straight run up then we saw a little bit of consolidation not even a pullback really and then we popped up even further so I'm looking for that little pullback potentially here on the S&P um, to get a nice entry point maybe on let's say an SPXL or something uh, which is a ticker symbol that goes up whenever the S&P goes up that's kind of my thoughts there if we go to the Dow Jones industrial average here guys up 59 points this is doing a bit better than the S&P right now up point two. If we go to the one day, one minute, we can actually see on that big spike up that we saw this morning, this actually did hit an all time high at about 27560 bucks. Then we saw the massive sell off, but ultimately this is holding a nice little uptrend from yesterday, right? You guys can see we hit a low yesterday at about um, 2410 here. I guess technically the low was 2402 um, or 27402 rather, but later in the day we hit that low 27407 and it seems like we're holding that uptrend from that low based on the trend that I just drew for you guys and this is something that I'm looking to see if it holds heading into the market close. If it does close like this that's going to be a very strong close for the bulls. That 
that would be um, really indicating to me that we may be pushing up further here um, tomorrow in terms of the Dow. But just like the S&P, this thing is overbought in terms of the RSI, and it could be due for a nice healthy pullback here in the next couple of days. Maybe back down to 27,350, 27,400, which we know was the previous all-time high. So it would be nice to see if we held that level as a support. That could be a nice little dip entry um, on the Dow Jones. So going to the NASDAQ here, guys, very similar, overbought, right? Could be in store for a pullback down to about 81.20. That's kind of where I'm looking at based on this trend line that I've drawn out. That was an old all-time high a couple of days ago, and obviously since we've broken above it, we've made that level a new support. And if we go to the one day, one minute, you guys can see not much movement today. Honestly, if anything, we're descending based on um, even the pre-market you know, futures here. As you guys can see, this was the movement 5 a.m. all the way to about the market open. It took a big dump. Then we popped up a bit, but ultimately we're pretty flat on the day. Only up $5.50 right now, up 0.07%. So overall, guys, that's kind of what these markets are looking like right now. Pretty flat other than the Dow. The Dow's up a little bit, but still, I wouldn't consider that a crazy day or anything. And if anything, guys, this is setting up for a nice little retracement, a nice little pullback over the next couple of days, or at least that's what I hope, right? If this thing runs up even tomorrow, uh, even more tomorrow, you know, at that point, we're going to be in even more need of a pullback. So either way, if it happens today, tomorrow, the next day, I do think we're going to see a pullback regardless. And I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that down below in the comment section. So let's talk about what I did today, guys, in terms of the market. And honestly, not much movement today. If you all recall, yesterday I bought into ATV, ticker symbol ATVI, which is Activision Blizzard. And let me pull that up for you guys. I bought in there yesterday. And if we go to the five day, five minute, we'll be able to see um, a nice little pattern here. Actually, no, on the one hour chart, you'll be able to see it better. This pattern is what I'm seeing, right? I'm seeing a very strong resistance at around $56, $57, as you guys can clearly see here. But I'm also seeing an ascending pattern um, of higher lows, right? Low at about 52 here, next low at about 53.60, next one's about 54 ish dollars. And um, yesterday, we actually bottomed at about 54.3 and started to run up from there, really solidifying that as a higher low. And that gave me the comfort to buy in. And I believe off the top of my head, I think I got in at about 54.80, um, roughly right around 54.80. And if you guys watched my video yesterday, I told you guys how I actually ended up selling half of my position, um, um, you know, for profits to lock it in right before the market closed. And I held half into today. And hoping that, you know, I was hoping yesterday that we would do something like this. Ultimately, um, let me see if these uh, trend lines work, something like this, right, where we pop above and into the 56s. But ultimately, we tried doing that this morning, but we failed. We dumped here. And at this point, like I said in yesterday's video, which is why I was comfortable holding these shares overnight, at this point, even though we dumped, I was still up on the position because I had that buffer, right, because I was in already at about 54.80. Again, I sold half of my position here. So even if it sold off, I'd still be up because I was already up at the close of the market yesterday, if that makes any sense to you guys. So even though it dumped, I wasn't panicking at all because I was, you know, again, up on the position. So from this point, guys, we found a bottom at about 55.11. I did not sell yet. I wanted to see if it was going to find support. Ultimately, it did at about 55.20. And then on Honestly, guys, I just took my profits on the rest of the shares. I think it was at about 55.40. And let me explain to you guys why. Very simple. It's because they're reporting earnings, I believe, on the 7th, right? And the 7th, um, let me just, uh, yeah, it's on the 7th at 3.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And this company can go 
up on earnings, which would be amazing for me if I were to hold on onto the position, or this company could tank on earnings as well, which would be bad for me. So I figured that gamble, that risk is not worth it for me right now. I'm up on the position. Might as well sell out, lock in the profit, and then wait until after earnings to maybe get back into ATV. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, just waiting till earnings to get back in maybe because there is a lot of potential up to about 63 bucks on ATV. We've talked about that um, a lot, but after earnings, we'll see what it ends up doing. Another thing I ended up doing today, guys, and what I want to talk about and focus a little bit on in this video is I bought a little bit more NEO stock, to be completely honest with you guys. I bought some more NEO stock, and let's just talk about NEO stock in general. This is one of my spec positions, and I don't advise anybody out there um, to buy a lot of a spec stock, right? To buy a huge amount of your portfolio into a spec stock. Obviously, if you want to do that, you can do it, right? But for me, I'm viewing this literally, guys, as a position that is less than 2-3% of my portfolio. This is a position that if I lost completely... I wouldn't be phased by it. This is money that I'm willing to lose. And you guys know, especially for those of you all that have been following the channel for a while, I'm down a lot significant on my position in NEO. I was buying in the $5, uh, the $5 range. I've actually only bought one um, time, one time at about $550. I put like five, six hundred bucks into it, and I've been riding it out since, down about 60-70%. But today and yesterday, honestly, we got some good news about NEO. Neo, causing the stock to spike, and you guys can see it's moving as we speak right now, heading into the close, which is a very, very bullish move here. We plateaued at 220 for the uh, majority of the day after that initial run-up, and now that we're kind of leveling up, we're pushing up even further, that's extremely, extremely bullish. So what caused this? Well, we got news yesterday that Neo did extremely well in terms of its October delivery numbers, and I'm pulling up some stuff here on my phone to read to you guys and here we go Chinese premium electric vehicle manufacturer popped as high as 25% Monday afternoon before giving back some gains after releasing October delivery totals. Investors who have watched shares of NEO shed over 70% of their value year to date finally received some welcome news. Here's the big number, guys. It delivered 2,526 vehicles in October, which was good for a 25% increase from a strong delivery in September. The impressive totals were recorded despite a seven-day national holiday in the beginning of October, which is really good actually there, guys. That's a pretty good thing to think about. Deliveries broke down to 2220 ES6 models and 306 ES8 vehicles. So that's the first big positive piece of news for NEO here. And how did that affect the stock, guys, over the past couple of days? Well, take a look for yourselves. We've gone from a um, dollar fifty, pretty much. We popped all the way up pre-market to a dollar sixty-six. This is yesterday's performance. Then it ran up all the way to a dollar eighty-six. Then sold off to one seventy-three um, at the close yesterday. So overall, yesterday we saw again a twenty thirty percent increase at one point in the stock. Then it sold off. And then, guys, today we got a huge piece of news, which is why I ended up buying in a little bit of more um, of Neo stock in the stock market. And let me read to you guys that piece of news very quickly. Shares of NEO were up sharply on Tuesday on news that the company has secured an agreement to build cars with self-driving systems developed by Intel's subsidiary Mobileye. And for those of you guys that don't know Mobileye, let me read you what they are right off the bat. Mobileye is an Israeli subsidiary of Intel Corporation that develops vision-based self-driving car and advanced driver assistance systems providing warnings for collision prevention and mitigations. NEO's deal with Mobileye has two parts. NEO will integrate Mobileye's 
level four self-driving system into upcoming models for consumer markets in China and other major territories. And these territories, they are expected to expand globally, which is something really, really good and attractive as an investor, which I'm an investor in NEO stock here. NEO will also work with Mobileye to develop and build a self-driving taxi that will be used exclusively by a Mobileye-owned robo-taxi ride-sharing service. The taxi will be based on NEO's next-generation electric vehicles. So I personally think this is really, really good for NEO. Going into this automation, you know, self-driving cars, robo-taxis, all of that good stuff, partnering with a very big company like Intel, its subsidiary Mobileye, because quite frankly, guys, this stock has been getting badder. There's been a lot of bad news about it, and the stock price really reflects that, right? From 1060, it saw that, you know, that's the price a couple of months ago. It's gone down to $1.16. It's been burning through cash like crazy during this period. A lot of people were thinking that, you honestly, Neo was going to go bankrupt after quarter two last quarter. They, a lot of people were saying they only have a couple of weeks left before they run out of cash. So the fact that the, you know, they're beating on deliveries, you know, they have this good news going for them getting into this deal with Mobileye. This made me comfortable to put a little bit more money into Neo, put a little bit more, bring the cost bases down from the mid fives to the mid threes. But let me say, this guys I'm not looking to add any more money to NEO as of now this is a built out position in my eyes because again it's a spec position very small amount of my portfolio and I'm just going to let it ride at this point right I brought that cost basis down on this good news and uh, I just want to watch it and see what it does see if NEO executes in terms of really beating on delivery numbers and I want to see how the process and the progress goes with this new deal with Intel kind of more details on that so overall that is Neo in a nutshell what's been going on over these past couple of months and what's really been driving it over these past couple of days so if you guys have any thoughts on that any comments feel free to drop a comment down below right now and let's very quickly finish off this video with a couple of stocks that I'm watching um, right now over these next couple of days Facebook being one of them and by the way guys I forgot to mention this in yesterday's video um, and today quite frankly a couple of minutes ago but I'm also in Facebook right now as a swing trade right I'm holding this one pretty much break even on my shares right now and unless it breaks below one 93. I'm going to going to continue to hold this. But ultimately, why I like Facebook and why I'm holding it is because we're in the channel between 193 to about 205 and how we've really broken above that old resistance and held it over the past couple of days at 193, that being very bullish in my eyes. So, I'm in this one really, you know, plan on holding it to about 205 bucks. That's where I do have my limit sell right now and uh, I do I plan on adding more money if we get into the 198 level, 196, 197. But until then, I'm simply holding. And it's just looking bullish to me, guys. I really like the way Facebook is trading right now. You guys is another one that kind of really consolidated today. It didn't do much. Um, I guess you can say 5% is good, but ultimately it's gapped up to 20 bucks right overnight um, pretty much right we gapped up to 20 bucks or 2090 actually closer to 21 bucks we pulled down held 20 bucks kind of you know uh, uh, fiddling around that level for a little bit we we broke below it momentarily down to about 1957 but overall if we're looking on this 20 day chart $20 does seem like a pretty strong level of support um, for you guys so right now my theory like I uh, mentioned in yesterday's video of you guys going to 23 bucks is still in play if it were to trade down to about 19 bucks today um, that'd be different but the fact that we're heading into the market close we're holding this level that is good for the bulls out here um, to potentially make for this thing to make a, a leg up uh, tomorrow that could potentially happen here or maybe on Thursday after that natural gas report depending on what that ends up um, coming in like but overall this is looking good guys you guys um, natural gas 
gas in general. What I'm seeing here, um, it's struggling at about $2.90. If we go to the four hour chart, we can see, actually, no, we can't see that. Maybe on the one year, one day chart, we'll be able to see. Um, it is a level of resistance um, based uh, pretty much from about a year ago in the March month of 2019. Um, you know, that's where we got topped off at, at about 290. So if we break that, that's could, that could be a straight shot up to $3 on natural gas, which is kind of what I'm watching at this point. And if that happens, you guys should have no problem going to $23. So two more stocks really quickly here, guys, before I do end off the video, Roku, this one's reporting earnings tomorrow. It's worth watching because it's holding that 50 SMA support on the four hour chart at a higher low, as well as an old resistance at about 138 as a new support as well. So earnings, this can definitely fluctuate the stock up or down. Um, if they report good earnings, good EPS, good guidance, especially guidance, guys, that's super important in driving a stock in terms of earnings reports. Um, this could be a good play back up to 150. But the thing is that kind of scares me is um, this can make the move right after the market um, or rather right after the earnings report, which if you're not already in the stock, you can miss the move but then again it's a huge gamble so I'm not getting in before the earnings report you might want to gamble on that and uh, you might you might win big but the thing is you might lose big as well which is why I prefer to wait until after see what they report guidance EPS revenue then make my decision a uh, decision from there guys so another one that's reporting is Disney they're reporting on the 7th I meant to talk about this on Sunday's video completely forgot another big thing about Disney is Disney plus here is launching I believe it's on the 12th or the 13th of this month, November, which believe it or not, guys, the time is finally here. It's seven days away. Remember a couple of months ago, we were talking about it here and we were thinking, ah, November is so far away. Well, the time is here. Disney Plus is coming. Earnings are coming out as well. And honestly, I don't know how this stock's going to react, right? It's kind of been cooling off a bit over the past couple of months after the initial public release of Disney Plus plus which caused the stock to go up like crazy the past in a couple of months ago right but again since then it's been cooling off so i wonder if we get some press releases um you know about the initial release of disney plus being very very amazing maybe initial subscribers numbers whatever that may be i think this is what could cause the stock to really go up but if we don't really get any big news surrounding that Maybe even if we get negative news, this stock may be cooling off. Who knows, right? It may be cooling off down to the 120s um, based on the trend that I'm seeing. But on the flip side, let's say they get amazing earnings on the 7th, that could change everything as well, right? If they crush EPS, guidance is amazing, revenue is great, and on top of that, let's say Disney Plus comes out, kills it right off the bat, we get some initial, um, you know, the, you know, uh, positive optimism from the media, whatever it may be, I'm sure we'll start to see stuff like that, that could end up shooting the stock, you know, very, very high, maybe even back to the 140s, honestly, guys, and I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that down below in the comments, and um, that's pretty much it for the video, right? If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and don't forget, all the links are down below, Instagram, Twitter, the Strive Smart Discord, the Strive Smart Facebook group, Strive Smart Merch, all of that good stuff is linked down below, so I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.